We're proof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus, aka The Mad Dog, and we're back with another video. Now the other day on the Reddit page, r slash graphic novels, they released their list of the top 100 that was community driven, so everybody put in their votes, but in a world where it's impossible to have read absolutely everything, I wanted to go through this list and see how many I've read, and also just how many I own. And kicking it off at number 100, we've got Monstrous, which you might be able to see over my shoulder here. I know there's a volume 2 that's scheduled to come out, and this is going to be one of those series that I'll read when it's all finished. So we're off to a great start, but at number 99, we've got Fun Home. I did not know that this had become a Broadway musical, which is something that I'd probably end up watching. Although I don't think it'll beat Back to the Future the musical. I had to read this as part of university. It is pretty interesting, but I don't really think it's one of the best graphic novels that I've ever read. Number 98, we've got Vagabond, which is something that I have not touched in any way, shape, Perform. I don't have a clue what it's about, but I always hear people raving about it, so maybe it is something that should be on my list. Number 97, we've got Upgrade Soul, which is a book that I've never even heard of until I've just seen the cover. Number 96, we've got a collection of Peanuts comics. Admittedly, I've never really been into the comic strips. I've got that super fancy Donald Duck edition just because of the fact that it was so beautiful, and there was also an issue with the price. But I've never really read that, and I'm not sure if this is going to be something that I'll start enjoying as I get older, but for the time being, nothing. Number 95, we've got Rick Remender's Tokyo Ghost. I do own this in its super fancy edition, and this was the only book that I reviewed during Set Remender, which was an event that really did not go the way that I wanted it to. I absolutely love the art with this and the world that it's set up, but I just wasn't really blown away by the story. It's in no way bad, maybe I should come back to it at a later time, but at the minute, I don't really know why it's on here. Number 94, we've got the 1916 to 1918 collection of Crazy and Ignatz. If it wasn't clear from my pronunciation of that title, I have not even heard of this book. Number 93, we've got Beauty, and unless it's accompanied by the Beast, then I have not heard of this. Number 92, we've got The Art of Charlie Chai, Hock Chan. Number 92, we've got The Art of Charlie Chan, Hock Ai. Number 92, we've got The Art of Charlie Chan, Hock Chai. Again, this is another one that I haven't read, but the cover looks pretty decent. I like the art style. It does look a little bit like he's a Funko Pop. Number 91, and I'm not sure if this is just the collection of the early Spider-Man stories or Amazing Fantasy 15. I did at one point own the omnibus of this, but it was when I was really young and I did give this a good go, so I have read this. But I don't currently own it because I did sell them a while back because I had that first print that was like about the size of one Calyx cube. Number 90, it's the Pushman and Other Stories. Again, this is an art style that it looks like I'd enjoy, but I've not heard of this, I haven't read it, nor do I own it. Number 89, and finally one that I have read, reviewed on this channel, and really enjoy because it's The Punisher by Garth Ennis. It's a Marvel Knights run, I'm assuming that this is going to be Welcome Back Frank, but I absolutely enjoy Welcome Back Frank, and it definitely deserves to be on this list. Number 88, because I'm already losing count, we've got Gideon Falls by Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. I do own the first hardcover of this, but similar to Monstrous, I am waiting for it to be finished out. It does look like I'll get a chance to jump into this soon, because the second volume has already been solicited, and you can already pre-order it and pick up other books from the channel's sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services, and if you use code woof woof, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code woof woof, ship it together for 5% off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below, and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Number 87, we've got Duncan the Wonder Dog, and in all honesty, if you put a gun to me head and said, tell me what this book's about, based on this cover, I'd tell you just pull the trigger, it's been a really bad week. It's only Monday. Actually, there's just a stretch of books that I haven't read, haven't owned, so we're just going to blast through them. At 86, we've got Safe Area Garazzi, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing correctly. Don't own this, haven't read it. Nimona, another one, haven't heard of it, haven't read it, haven't owned it. I'm really not doing too good at this list. 84, King City, cool looking cover, but again, haven't heard of this until today. Although I might pick that one up. After that, Goodnight Pun Pun. Okay, yes, we do own this. Yay, we finally got another one. Boy, I haven't read it. This is in Shadowcat section of the collection because, as you guys know, I'm not a manga guy, which seems to be really hindering me in this list. Number 83, I think, we've got The World of Edenit. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but this is one of those Mobius books, so I really like the look of the art style, but I've never read these, nor do I own them. Following that up, we've got another Mobius book, The Airtight Garage, again, haven't read any of these. Number 81, we've got Stray Bullets, and this is that book that's near enough in everyone's collection that I always go, I should check that out, and then I just 
never do. I probably will own this and read it at one point, but today is not that day. Number 80, we've got a big one that I don't own and haven't read. It's the Meta Barons from the Humanoids collection. Again, they were doing a super fancy edition of this, so because I couldn't pick that up, I just never jumped into this series. Yeah, if I can't get the most expensive way of buying a book, apparently I just won't touch it. Number 79, we've got Kingdom Come, which is a fantastic book. It was one of the first comics that I ever read, and I've got it in the beautiful, beautiful absolute edition, and I'm really due a reread of that. Number 78, another one that I've read and own, we've got Fear Agent by Rick Remender. This was actually the first Rick Remender book that I bought in the Rick Remender format, so it's because of this that I've probably collected the rest of them, which is convenient because the next book is Black Science. Another Rick Remender book, and I honestly thought that Fear Agent would have been the top of his picks. But I haven't read this yet, I do own it, and I do eventually want to get to it. And I'm not too sure I can say the same about the next book, because we've got It's a Good Life If You Don't Weaken. I know absolutely nothing about this book, the title and the cover gives away nothing, but if you told me it was in a slipcased oversized hardcover, I'd probably end up getting it. I think we're at 73, and we've got Grant Morrison's The Invisibles. I really want to read this, it's one of those books that I always keep looking at when I've got a bit of time, but for some reason I always keep passing this up, a lot of people say this is pretty much what The Matrix was based on, and I love The Matrix, so this is going to be one of those that I know I will read, but at the moment I only just own it. After that we've got Fantastic Four by Jonathan Hickman, which is a book that I'm glad that I both read and own in my collection at the moment. The first part of this run is phenomenal, and I definitely agree with it being on this list, but when the future foundation stuff comes in, I just wasn't really feeling it as much. Then we've got Samaris, which does look beautiful, but I haven't read this and I don't own it. Just beating that is Tintin, which is another one of these comic strips that I've just never really jumped into. But then we've got a book that I do own, I have read, and I absolutely love because it's Jeff Lemire's Sweet Tooth. Phenomenal book, I'm glad that this is on the list. Admittedly, I probably would have put this a little bit higher. Number 69, and if we were at bingo right now, everybody would be losing their minds. We've got My Favourite Thing is Monsters. I believe this did quite well at the Eisners, but again, it's just a another one that I haven't read. 68 and I thought Black is Science was the highest rated Rick Remender book, but we've got Deadly Class. I have read the first part of this, mostly because the main character is called Marcus, and I own all the hardcovers that they've released so far. Number 67, we've got Daredevil by the man himself, Mark fucking Wade. I definitely agree with its inclusion on this list, it is a phenomenal run, and it's one that I definitely need to go back to. Number 66, making it into the top two thirds, we've got One Piece. Again, this is a manga, so I haven't really delved into it. Shadowcat hasn't bought this either, mostly because of the fact that it's a bit intimidating, it feels like there's a new volume pretty much every time I breathe in or out. 65 and one of the first reviews that I ever did on this channel, we've got Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips's Kill or Be Killed. It's a pretty decent book, I don't think it's perfect, and I wouldn't really rate this over something like Daredevil by Mark Wade. Number 64, we've got Berlin, and this is another one of those books similar to Stray Bullets, where I see everybody own this, but I've never really jumped into it. Number 64, we've got Show It, A History of Japan. Now I quite like my history comics, there's been some that I've read, there was one about the cup noodle, which might have actually been a manga now that I think of it. So I'm not closing the door on this show a book, but at the minute I haven't had the chance to pick it up. Number 62, a book that made a massive splash last year that I still need to pick up, we've got Monsters. This Barry Windsor Smith book just took the comic world by storm last year, and it still seems like it's very highly acclaimed. Number 61, we've got Strangers in Paradise. I absolutely love this run. I had the paperback omnibuses, and then as soon as I got a chance to get the hardcovers, I upgraded to that. But I definitely agree with that on the list. It's, it's got some moments that'll get to you. Number 60, and I think the first Alan Moore book that I've seen on this list, but we've got Promethea. I own all three of these hardcover volumes. I missed out on the beautiful Absolute Editions, but unfortunately, as of yet, I haven't read this. I do love the art. These are books that I've already flicked through, so I might have spoiled it for myself at some point. But it's J.H. Williams the third. You kind of have to take a peek. Number 59, we've got Persepolis. Persepolis. That's the title that I'm going with. And like I said, I hit my head the other day, even though I'm normally not good at reading stuff to begin with. I've heard of this book, but I've never read it and I don't currently own it. Then at 58, we've got Donald the Duck. Now, like I said, I've got the Scrooge McDuck collection, but I don't think that this is included. So to play it safe and to not cheat on this list, I'm just not going to add it to any total. Number 57, a book that I thought would have been much higher, but we've got Batman the Long Halloween. This actually was the first book that I ever reviewed on this channel, so I was really rusty when I was doing it. Why I absolutely enjoyed this, I think personally though, I enjoyed Dark Victory just a little bit more. Then we've got Mega Hex from Fantagraphics Book, and I've never heard of this title and I don't own it. Then we've got Tom King's Vision, a book that unfortunately I didn't get the oversized hardcover for, but I've got the complete collection, but I haven't read it just yet. We've then got Fables, a book that I read a significant amount of in its original trade paperbacks, and now I've got all four compendiums, so I'm going to include this in both lists, and I'm going to go back and read it eventually. Next up, we've got Cerebrus by Dave Sim, and I don't know what this book's about, but I am tempted to jump on Amazon now and buy it. I know I shouldn't judge books by its cover, I know that that's a very famous saying, but still, that's 
just a damn nice cover. Number 52, I think, and a book that definitely should be higher, but we've got Grant Morrison's All-Star Superman. Phenomenal book. I've got the absolute edition of it, and I don't think I'd ever sell this. Number 51, we've got the Uncanny X-Men, and I'm not sure which part this means. It's the issue for Giant Size X-Men issue 1, so it doesn't mean the full run. Admittedly, I feel like something like the Dark Phoenix Saga might have an argument to be in here, but the full Uncanny X-Men run, I can't really see that. However, I do own all the omnibuses, and I have read quite a significant part of this, so it's a win on both columns. Then breaking into the top half of this list, we've got Alan Moore's Miracle Man, a book that is thankfully getting an omnibus later this year, although it's probably going to be pushed back. I've only read the first couple of issues of this when I was bored in a HMV and they had the three slim hardcovers, and I was waiting for me dad to pick up something so I ended up just checking this out. After this we've got the Frank book which I haven't heard of and I don't own. At number 48, a book that I will forever own, forever love because it's Daredevil by Brian Michael Bendis. This is one of the books that was essential to getting me into comics in the first place. This would definitely, I'd probably even put it in my top five. Oh god, then we've pretty much got an entire page of stuff that I've not really read. 47 is The Ballad of the Salty Sea, I don't even know what this is. 46 is Understanding Comics, which they had at my university and they said that we should read it as part of the graphic novel course that we did. But in case you haven't learned already, I was not a good student so I haven't picked this up. After that, we've got The Best of American Splendor. I've heard really good things about it, but it's just not something I've jumped into. We've then got a Junji Ito book. We've got Uzumaki, which I've heard great things about and I was tempted to pick it up for like a horror themed month. It's probably going to be October, but his stuff looks way too creepy and I'm just not up for that right now. But then we've got Buddha and again, I haven't read this, I haven't owned this and maybe that's why I've got quite bad luck. After that, we've got a title that I would like to pick up if Dark Horse would do some fancy deluxe editions because it's Lone Wolf and Cup. I've heard great things about this for years and it seems to be that manga that transcends the medium. So I would like to jump into this, but I feel like I'm playing a game of chicken with Dark Horse. Then another one that I wish I owned and I had read because it's Jeff Lemire's Essex County. I've heard that this is an absolute tearjerker as well, so I know that this would get to me because I once cried at a Nicorette advert. So the stakes are really low when it comes to me, but this is a book that I would gladly pick up. Number 40, we've got Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck. And like I said, I'm not sure if that's contained in the super fancy edition, but again, I'm just gonna play it safe. Damn, another big one that would be on my list, but we've got Daredevil by Frank Miller. They are showing the cover to the companion, so I'm not sure if this is born again or Man Without Fear, but either way, I've read it and I own it and I'm never going to sell it. Number 38, we've got Norsica of the Valley of the Wind. Shadowcat does own this, so it is technically in the collection, but I've never read this and it doesn't really seem like my kind of thing. And I think that's my point behind doing this video, that you can still like comics without reading all of the greatest comics of all time. So if you haven't read all of these, don't feel bad because I haven't, so you're not alone. Speaking of which, another book that I haven't read, we've got The Now of Brown. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but this does look kind of funky. I need kind of looks like the washing machine that my mum had for years, so that's bringing back memories. 36 definitely deserves to be on this list because we've got Scott Pilgrim. I ad adored this book when I was growing up, and I've had a different view of it each time that I've read it. Like, I reviewed this last year, but I feel I could already go back to this now and have a completely different take on it. Number 35, I believe, we've got Blankets. I've heard absolutely nothing but good things about this, but unfortunately, I've just never got round to getting this. I don't even know what it's about, so maybe one of you could convince me in the comments. But a book that I don't need convincing about is Warren Ellis's Transmetropolitan. I absolutely love this. I've got all 10 volumes of the trade paperbacks, and I was tempted to get the absolute edition when it looked like they were reprinting volume 1, but then they just never followed it up with the later volumes. Number 34, we've got Black Sad. Now, I own this in the collection, Shadowcats read this, and I have also played the game, but I haven't actually read the book itself. Oh my god, number 33, I really thought this would have been higher, but we've got Batman Year 1. I genuinely thought that would have been in the top 10, and it'd probably be in mine personally. Phenomenal book, the art always blows me away, and I do think that that's been a bit underrated on this list. Next up, we've got the Etta now, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm sorry, if I've got it wrong. I think I've seen this collection because where you can see the eyes is actually a hole into the book and I like that kind of thing. But unfortunately it wasn't enough to tempt me to buy it or read it. Number 30 I think, just trust the number that's on screen, I'm going to be much better at this in editing, but we've got Batman by Grant Morrison. Again I'm assuming that this is the whole run and I think overall I wouldn't rate this higher than Batman Year One. But either way it's the community that's spoken and I have read the large majority of this run, I don't even know if I read it in chronological order. Like I started with Batman R.I.P so I really went backwards into this. 
this. But I also own all three hardcovers. Number 29, we've got two. Now, I do own all the trade paperbacks of this. At one point, I was tempted to upgrade because I absolutely love the art. But in all honesty, I read the whole thing and I don't really agree with it being this high on the list. It's decent, it's entertaining, but I do think it really overstates its welcome and drags out its own plot. And I just think it jumped the shark really early on and didn't really stick to what it said it was gonna do. That's just me personally. I know I'm completely in the minority with that one, but either way, I do own this and I have read it. Number 28, we've got The Absolutely Beautiful Criminal by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. I own this in two different formats, but again, I'm not gonna cheat. And it's a series that I wanted to get more people into, which is why I did a video talking about how you can collect it. Phenomenal run. I hope they continue doing stories for that, and I definitely agree that it should be on this list. Number 27, we've got Sin City by Frank Miller. I'm glad I finally got a bit of a streak going with this because I have read this and also own it. I'm also tempted to go back and do a full review with this series and take each volume and go through it one by one. One that I do not think should be this high, and I know I'm completely in the minority with, is East of West. Now, I do still own all three hardcovers because I absolutely love the art, but I was so hyped when I read this and so disappointed with what I got. I just think it's unnecessarily convoluted, it doesn't know which plots to focus on, and it fell far beneath the expectations that I had for it that were built from other people's recommendations. After that, we've got Lock and Key, which I do own and I read the first volume of, and I am hopefully going to go back and read the full thing in time for Halloween. And making it into the top quarter, we've got Berserk. Now, I do own those beautiful hardcover volumes, and I am eventually planning on reading this when it's caught up with the series. It is unfortunate that the mover passed away before he could complete his story. And I'm wondering now, I know I've seen a lot of manga and different comic strips in this, so do graphic novels count manga as well? Because I always thought they were two separate things. Number 23, another book that would be 100% in my top 10, probably even in my top 5, but we've got Brian K. Vaughan's Why the Last Man. Phenomenal book. This was one of the first Vertigo series that I ever read, and when I came back to it last year, I thought they wasn't going to live up to my own high, but it did, and I just loved this beginning, middle, end, and I really would have put that higher, but I'm glad to see this on the list either way. Number 22, another great book, but we've got Darwin Cook's DC The New Frontier. I've got the beautiful 15th Anniversary Absolute Edition, and I've read this countless times, and I'll probably continue to read it the older that I get. Another one that I recently reread, we've got Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. Another one that I genuinely enjoy more now than when I first read it. And I do own the Absolute Edition, which does unfortunately come with that sequel. But yeah, another win for both columns. Breaking into the final top 20 now and kicking it off is The Walking Dead. A book that I own in multiple different formats and I read last year and I absolutely love this. Again, this would probably be my personal top 10. The fact they just maintain so much momentum for so many issues is just damn impressive. Number 19, we've got Day Tripper that I do own in the beautiful Absolute Edition and I keep saying that I'm going to read this, but as of this moment, I just haven't yet started. Number 18, we've got Mike Mignola's Hellboy. Now, I've got the beautiful Library Editions and this was one of my favourite series when I was growing up. So yeah, it's definitely winning both columns for this one. Number 17, we've got Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. Now, I've read the first couple of trade paperbacks of this and then I upgraded to the Absolute Editions. So I haven't finished out this run just yet, but I am planning on doing that later this year. Number 16, we've got Jimmy Corrigan the smartest kid on earth and if you know anything about me it's that I absolutely can't stand kids so it will take a lot of persuading to get me to pick this one up. Number 15 we've got Black Hole a book that I technically should say that I read but I haven't. I was supposed to read this for uni. I think I even did an essay on this without ever having read the full thing. But I did rent it from the library, so I don't know if that counts as one. But either way, I don't think I can include this in either column. Number 14, we've got Asterius Polyp, which is one of those books that I've heard a lot of people talk about, but I've never read this. Number 13, a book that I read at the beginning of this year, but I've got Bone. And I do just love this collection as well. It did definitely have its high points, but overall I did enjoy it. Number 12, we've got V for Vendetta. I've got the Absolute Edition of this, which is the nicest smelling book in my collection. And it has been years since I've read this, so I am definitely due a reread, but it does deserve to be in this list. And beating it at number 11, and a book that I believe should be in the top 10, is Invincible. Phenomenal series. I've talked about it a few times on this channel, but I've never actually done a video review for it. And I am never going to say no to jumping back into that universe, so it might be something that's on the horizon. Number 10, we've got Maggie the Mechanic, a Love and Rockets book, which I know is getting some super fancy edition with all the years of collection 
Productions. But I don't even know what Love and Rockets is. I believe it might be another comic strip, which is probably the reason why I haven't picked it up before. But it's not a great start for me as we move into the top 10. Then at number 9, we've got From Hell, which I did read, but I was just way too young to really understand what was happening. And I think it's fine to admit that, you know, tastes change and I mature a little bit. So I know I should pick this up again. And they did do a colour edition of this, which might actually help me to see it as a different book. But the minute I don't own it. Number 8, and again, I'm not doing great at this top 10 because we've got The Incal, which is another Mobius and Humanoids book. So it is something that I know has a lot of prestige, but I've just never jumped into this universe. And ironically, number 7 is 8 Ball. This is a wacky looking book that I've never jumped into, but I know it's won a lot of Eisner Awards and people who have read this really like it. I don't really know the first thing about it, so I'm a bit hesitant to jump into it. Number six, finally a book that I can agree with its placing is Preacher. This and Why the Last Man are the reason why I love Vertigo comics so much. I've got all my trade paperbacks still and I've also got the Absolute Editions, which are some of the nicest looking books in my collection. Very happy to see that on the list. Number five, and I don't know if I agree with this being here, but it's Saga. Now yes, Saga is very high quality, it's very enjoyable, but it hasn't finished. What if this ends atrociously? What if it's something like Ex Machina that just ends up making no sense? Like, don't get me wrong, I think it could be one of the greatest graphic novels of all time, but for me, a graphic novel is something that's complete. So I own all the hardcovers that have been released so far, and I've read up to where it had that break, but still, I'm a bit reluctant to agree with it because we just don't know how this thing's gonna end. Now, the top four, and already there's a glaring omission here. Where in the fuck is Batman the Killing Joke? Where's Alias? Where's stuff like Marvels? Where's Astonishing X-Men? I don't know, this might have inspired me to do my own list of my favourite graphic novels of all time, but either way, let's jump into the top four. Because starting it off, we've got Akira. Now yes, Shadowcat does have the super fancy box set edition, and she's ready, but I have never touched this. I did watch it in cinema when they re-released it, but I don't think that that can count for this list. In case you can't tell, I am losing my voice a little. Bit. Getting the bronze medal is Mouse. Now I did read a bit of this for uni but I didn't complete the full thing but I do know that this is one of those that I'm gonna have to go back to and read at some point. Number two we've got Alan Moore's Watchmen. Yeah there was no way that this list was gonna exist without this book. I definitely agree with it being on here. I tend to have a different experience every time I review this so I wasn't fully in love with it when I reviewed it last year but I could probably read it today and I might have a completely different experience. And number one and a book that I don't know if I can disagree with it being here is Neil Gaiman's Sandman. And the reason and why I can't disagree with it and if you watch one of my other videos you will know that I haven't yet read this. I did a list of the classics that I've never read and I believe that this was quite high to the top of the list. However I do own all the omnibuses and I know that when I'm in the right mind frame I'm gonna jump into it and just read the full thing but I know it's quite dense and a heavy read so I just haven't had that moment just yet. However congratulations to it being top of the list and hopefully one day I'll read it and see if I agree with that. Okay so I've totaled this up I'm not sure if I've got this wrong but out of the 100 books on this list apparently I only only currently own 49. Yep, I don't even own half of this list, and even worse than that, out of the 100, I have only read 42. So there are some on this list that I think I will pick up and eventually read, but at the same time, I don't regret any that I haven't read just yet. And you should be the same in your comic reading journey, but for fun, put in the comment section below what your numbers were. And I also want to give a shout out to the user Makeway for tomorrow on Reddit because they're the one who collated this list together. But that's the video, hopefully you enjoyed it, and until next time, just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof, see you at the next video.